Welcome back to Computers for the Completely Clueless. I'm Lee Keller. Tim Cavanaugh, and cleaning we, it up. we're cleaning things up. And in, in the last segment, we started the disk cleanup process. Um, and again, you can get there by clicking on Start, Accessories, and then System Tools. Or you can right click on the icon like for the C way. drive, and you can go right to the properties there. Different operating systems, if you've got a Vista computer, you may find disk cleanup in a slightly different location. Yeah. But it does the same thing. That, now, we did find out that under the accessories, system tools, it's still there on Vista. Right, exactly. That's a good thing. Exactly. So we've run the process now, and then up on the screen, the computer is telling us what files it thinks are safe to delete. And those are all the ones with the checkboxes. Right. Now, I don't want my setup files anymore. That's just for installing, so I'm getting rid of that. Right, and you've got it, some stuff in the recycle bin, so we can clean that up. Now I can compress old files. I'm actually going to skip that now, but normally I would do that. Mm -hmm. The reason I'm skipping that is it takes a long time. Right, And right. this show would have to be about an hour long at that point. So what, it's, what it shows you, again, if you read the entire screen, mm -hmm. uh, it shows you that you're saving or you're going to remove about 295,000 K. Mm -hmm. What does that mean, Lee, in real words? Uh, this isn't really that much. About a third of a gig. Yeah, so not yeah. a huge amount of space in this case on this computer. We don't use this computer every day. If like you use yours at home, home, it's a lot. All right. So now you do this once a month. I do this once a month. Okay. And I click OK. You sure you want to do that? Boom, and it's off and running. Right. Now it's going to actually going to give you a little progress indicator, mm -hmm. and it's going to show you the, the progress. And usually this is pretty quick. Uh, except nope. for when you're trying to do it live on television, yeah. <laughs> in which case it's usually pretty slow. But you can see it, it's ah, zipping go. through there, and it's uh, killing files, and it's done. Okay, now it's done. If we were to look at that disk, we would see that our pie chart was slightly different now. Let's go back and take a look. Because we've changed some of the things that are uh, there in the property. So yeah, slightly like, bigger in this case, not a big deal. Now let's look at some of the other tools that we have. Oh, well, another thing that we wanted to talk about was getting rid of old programs that okay. you don't use anymore. Now to get to this, we're going to go through a slightly different process. We're going to go to Start Control Panel. Mm -hmm. And then in the Control Panel for your computer, you're going to find a, uh, right at the top usually, because it says Add or Remove Program. Right, and you're alphabetical. Right. This is a little different on Vista. Okay. Remember we were doing that on the other show and we found okay. that out. But we simply double click on that and it's going to go through your computer and populate this list with everything that's been installed in now, your computer now that this you know may, about. This may sound odd, but when I get a new Windows computer, mm -hmm. this is the, one of the very first things I do. <sighs> I know what you mean. Why do? And I know people who go much further than this. What's the problem with buying a new Windows computer? Because they want to. Everybody's paid Microsoft to add their program to the list. Would you like to try America Online? Would you like to try Earthlink? Mm -hmm. e mm -hmm. Everybody's on that list, and mm -hmm. if you've already got a an ISP, you don't need that. Right, stuff. and we don't have that well, here because we're using a school district image. Mm -hmm. But if you buy a commercial um, a computer out of at one of the big box retailers or online or wherever, it's going to come with a lot of programs that you probably don't want and are just taking up space on your computer. So get rid of them. I'm going to get rid of this one because this isn't part of our district standard. Okay. Norton PC checkup. I'm All just right. going to click remove. Right, and it actually tells you when you look at the listing. It'll tell you how, if you use the program, and that one said rarely, so you know it's one that you've hardly ever used. Uh, it'll show you how much space you're going to make available, and very quickly you go through and off she goes. So you usually want to do this as part of your disk cleanup operation. Right, especially maybe you've installed some trial software or a little of this, a little of that, you never know. And this is a good way to clean things up. Now, the last thing we wanted to talk about this is... This is the big dog. Yeah, this is the one I do every month, no matter what. Right, and, and you you're going to have to go to the C drive again. I'm going to have to go to that C drive yep. again. That was a good trick. Thanks for teaching me that. I so we're going to right-click on the local disk, the C drive, go to Properties, and then on our Tools across the top, uh, we have some options. And now, there's one here in Windows that we don't see in Vista. Yeah, the error uh, checking. That error check, and I actually like to do that before I defrag That's as well. a good well. idea. And basically what that does is it looks to see if there are any misaligned files. Are there any things that are, that are in places where there are, the computer doesn't expect them to be? But now, the big one, defrag. the serious cleanup is defrag. What, what is defrag? Well, w when you save a, a file to a, the hard drive or you install a program, what it's doing is it's putting it in a specific location. So let's say you save a, a Word document. And then later you delete that Word document. Well, that space has been taken out. And other documents that you save later are put in the same location, but they might be too big. 
So it'll do some of it there and then some of it over here. Uh, and what and we're talking about, the, the actual physical hard drive, the magnetic right. disk, and the physical location where files are stored mm -hmm. on that disk. So if the computer has to work harder to find the location of the files and yeah. then spin the disk and get it, it starts to impact performance. It does. And right. what this does, this program is going through now, and it's going to reduce the distance between those files. And in most cases, put the entire file in one space so it doesn't have to go look so for the pieces no and put them together. So it's no longer fragmented, so therefore it is defragmented. Right. Right. Now, what time of day do you do this? Lee? You do this at the end of the day. You do, I the, do this before I go to bed because exactly, it can take hours. It can take hours and literally almost always yeah. will take that long. I have so a 300 be, some gig hard drive. Should be the very last thing you do late in the evening. Just go ahead, go through the defrag process, start it up. By the time you get up the next morning, it'll be done and the computer will be ready to go and should be noticeably faster. Yeah, okay. Well, a lot of good cleanup tips, so a lot of good ways to enhance the performance of your computer. And uh, another way that you can enhance a performance computer takes us to the question Questions, of the week. Yes. Oh, and our good, question of the week. A segue. I yeah, didn't, I know. didn't think Was that a segue or a segue? Yeah. Uh, I don't know. Anyway, so uh, the question of the week this week comes all the way from Castle Rock, Colorado. Wow. And uh, Larry F. out there who watches us on uh, YouTube or somewhere. Probably something. <laughs> we don't know. <laughs> uh, but anyway, Larry Rice says, uh, my neighbor says my computer will run faster if I get more RAM. Uh, what do I need to do, and I can I do this myself? Uh, RAM. Now, what's RAM? Well, RAM is your random access memory. That's where the computer manipulates everything, and, and basically that's where everything happens. Right. Remember we just said a computer disk is a physical magnetic disk yeah. that has to spin. That's, that's your hard drive. That's your hard drive. But your RAM is nothing but a bunch of Chips. magnetic yeah. uh, modules that plug into your computer. So uh, replacing RAM or adding RAM is really pretty easy. It's you have easy, to, but there, there are a few tricks. Yeah, there are a few things to, to keep to, to be aware of out there. Uh, we're going to run through those for, with you real quick here, Larry, and we're going to look on the computer. And one of the easiest things to do is, uh, if you want to know how to do this, do a Google search. Replace yes. RAM. Add RAM. We actually went to YouTube, and we found videos that show you how to do it, step-by-step -step instructions. Right. So you Install open the case. You can open, you open the mm -hmm. case of your computer. Obviously, you unplug it and disconnect everything. Open the case of your computer, and there's a specific slot where the RAM will just snap into place. Right. Now, here's the tricky part. Buying the right RAM. You've got to get the right <laughs> RAM. So when you buy your RAM, the thing that you need to have, uh, Larry, is you've got to know the manufacturer and the make and the model of the computer that you're upgrading. Mm -hmm. All right, so there are lots of places you can buy RAM. Uh, you can go down to one of the big, again, one of the big box stores or an office uh, uh, retailer or online. But if you don't know the make model uh, of your computer, it's possible to buy the wrong RAM because yeah. that, that, that slot it has to fit into has a specific number of pins. Talk and to the guy so at your computer forth. store. Tell yeah. him what you're doing. Yeah. What you have. Exactly. In some cases, you might actually want to pull out and throw away an old RAM chip because it doesn't have enough memory and just replace it with one that's got a lot more. Yeah. So that's another option. Uh, can you do this at home? I, I think most people can, can upgrade RAM on their computer. If you don't feel comfortable, take it in. It'll only cost you probably 10, 20 bucks to have somebody do it for yep. you. So. And RAM now costs 50, 60 oh, bucks. It's amazing how inexpensive yeah, it is. Yeah, so for, for a very little money, you can really, really improve the performance of your computer by adding more RAM. And Colorado State is the Rams. And Colorado State is the Rams. And there's a great place <laughs> that we buy um, RAM from called Rocky Mountain RAM. And we love them. They're yeah, good. they're a great company. So with all that said, uh, it's time to say goodbye. Okay, you have a happy new year, and we'll see you next year on, on nah, Computers for the Computers Completely Clueless. Computers for the Completely Clueless. I'll get it right. <laughs> One of these days. I'm clueless. <laughs> as soon as the show gets going. Yeah. <laughs>